Welcome to HR Voices. A podcast for independent HR and people professionals and the businesses they support. HR Voices is brought to you by the expert team at HR Independence Limited. We hope you enjoy. Hi there, welcome to the most recent edition of HR Voices. And today I'm with my co-host Mary Asante, and we are joined by Pinky Pinky Jangra, who is a resilience wellbeing trainer speaker. And this is the first in our next mini-series around building resilience, so both personal resilience and building resilience into your business as a small business owner. And so I'm going to get Pinky to introduce herself because she's uh, got a really interesting take on resilience and how we can be more resilient in our businesses. So Pinky, tell us a bit about you and your background. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so I've been training in resilience and well-being and speaking in that area since about 2016. Um, and most recently in the last few years, it's been in the corporate sphere. So I do lots of talks and trainings around stress, resilience, uh, self-awareness, dealing with burnout, toxic positivity, all sorts of different topics relating to our well-being and our resilience for lots of different organizations, lots of different types of people from insurance industries, independent entrepreneurs, as I did for HRI. I train a lot of people across government and public sector as well. And I have about 18 years or so of experience in the actual industry and field of human development. So I've been training and learning and being coached myself as well. I don't know if you see all the books behind me, but I love to read and learn over and over again. There's always more to explore. So I have a real wealth of experience in that industry. It's just I live and breathe it. I absolutely love it. And so now I get the pleasure of teaching what I've learned and what I implement in my own life to help other people. I do also have a corporate background. So I did spend about 10 years working in management consulting for government and public sector, doing lots of different types of change and transformation work, which is also really awesome. And that really ties in with allowing me to now teach resilience and well-being to people in the corporate sphere and in the world of work, because I've very much been there, done that as well. And now as an independent business owner myself, I really like to share my lessons in resilience and well-being with people who are going on a similar journey in their own businesses. That's great. And give us your take, because resilience can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. So just give us your take on what resilience is and what being resilient means. Yeah, love it. A really good point to start on because there are a lot of myths about resilience. People think, oh, if I'm resilient, it means I'm really hard and strong and I can just punch through all my problems and keep going and never stop. And I'm tough and I don't get affected by things. But that's actually not what resilience is. Resilience is about growth and learning and adapting and being flexible and vulnerable and being self-aware. It's all about change and expansion. So it's not about hardness and toughening up. It's actually about softening down so that you can rebuild yourself into the next version of you that's going to help you to get through whatever challenge you are facing at any given time. I think that's a really, yeah, that's a great definition of resilience because you look up the now what does resilience mean and you probably think the exact opposite and uh, i think in the context of our uh, community and business owners and um, employees who might be listening to us it's really important i think your definition of is about growth is about effectively facing the challenges that might come your way and how best you deal with those and then come up the other end or the other side of it better prepared for whatever life holds for you yes absolutely and it compounds right so traditional definitions of resilience in the world of psychology they used to say that it's bouncing back from challenges hardships traumas and so what that makes you think is you have a baseline and then you fall down when you get a challenge and then you bounce back up to your baseline and then you fall down and you bounce back up But what we realize now, actually, it's not. If you're really resilient, you don't bounce back, you bounce forward. 
-hmm. you bounce up and above so you have a new baseline so that's where the growth happens and now you're operating at a new level and then inevitably challenges come you fall down again but if you're resilient again you'll bounce up and forward so your overall trajectory of life will be going upwards if you maintain your resilience and continue working on that and it is something you have to work on it is something you have to do consciously I think we are naturally resilient. I think all of nature has innate resilience built into us. Because if you think about humans, how many challenges we go through on the global scale, you know, whether it's pandemics, wars, famine, but we are actually still flourishing as a species. We're still growing. We're still here. Because in our nature, there is something about us that's very resilient. And we are nature. You know, we are the same as the plants, the animals. We're made of the same stuff. And if you look at nature, you'll always see examples of this innate resilience. You know, the plants that grow through concrete, you know, they come back, that nature comes back and we have that essence within us as well. And another example I really like to use of it, just to remind us really that we do all have it within us, because sometimes we can really feel like we don't. But just remember in the core of your soul, you have it within you. If you imagine the child, little baby learning to walk, they fall down they get back up again, they learn, they're like learning how to balance a little bit differently, how to move a little bit differently. And over again, eventually, they will learn how to walk. That's resilience, that's learning, that's growth. And it's in the baby when they're young, we don't have to teach them, it's innate. And so we all have that within us. And I think that knowing that's in you, I find is really helpful, because it makes you realize we, we probably can deal with a lot more than we think we can. And we have a lot of strength inside. So yeah, that's, I think, important to remember as well. I mean, that aligns quite nicely with this idea that failure is not necessarily a a bad thing. And as a business owner, when you start off, I think we all wish and hope that it's going to be this upward trajectory, which is I'm going to build my business, get a lot of clients, make a lot of money, do this, expand, grow, etc. But a lot of the time doesn't go like that. It really goes up, down, flat and then quiet, and then peak, and that, and really sort of being able to live through it all, learn from where it goes really well, learn from where it doesn't go so well, and sort of taking the experience from all of that so that you're better prepared, yeah, from business yeah. yeah. Absolutely, and, and running a business is not for everybody. Because it is tough for all of those reasons. It's not a straight line. It's not guaranteed secure all the time. Um, You know, and I think as we were just mentioning, you think you're going to have all this freedom and flexibility and you end up working even more than you thought you were going to. And it is not an easy ride. But yes, the skill is how do I navigate those treacherous seas? Um, And I think you make a really important point there about failure, how we perceive failure can really determine how much you can learn, grow and adapt and be resilient. Because, and I do have problems with this, I beat myself up about my failures all the time. So I'm always having to learn not to take it personally and just see things objectively and use it as an opportunity to grow and learn. Because otherwise, if you take your failures personally and they flatten you, you're not going to carry on and you're not going to eventually get to that really wonderful, sustainable business that has all the wonderful things that you want to create, which is there. It is possible. But it's just that journey, which is, yeah, it's painful sometimes, but it's not for everyone. But I think for people who can keep going with it, it has wonderful rewards as well. Do you think this is more about being a a growth mindset, though, you know, having a growth mindset? Because it sounds like actually in everything that we've spoken about so far, that it's very much about taking the experience, taking the knowledge, taking what you've learned, taking the failure and then learning how to do something with it and how to utilize it. And I wonder if that comes from sort of having a different mindset. Do you think there are people that don't have the mindset to do that? Yes, absolutely. And the opposite of it is the fixed mindset, which says, I can't be any different. I can't learn. I'm not allowed to fail. I can't grow. Or if there's something I can't do now, I'll never be able to do it. So these are all examples of the fixed mindset. And I think a lot of people will have a mixture of both within their own consciousness and their own psyche, but you can always choose. You can always choose to have the growth mindset to train yourself into that. 
And that, again, is a conscious choice, which is why we say resilience and building resilience and maintaining it is a conscious choice. You must have the will and do the work to build it and develop it. And, you know, a lot of it really comes down to childhood. You know, like you say, some people won't have such a growth mindset, depending on what they learned when they were kids, depending, you know, if they failed when they were kids, were they encouraged to learn and grow and say, it's okay, I'm going to get better? Or were they told, oh my God, you're awful, never do that again, you know, because that's the stuff that gets planted in our minds. And then we end up replaying it in our adult lives. So absolutely, some people will have more of a fixed mindset. Some people will have more of a growth mindset, but it's all open to change, I believe. And if you want to, you can choose to develop more and more of a growth mindset. And after a while, it will become your natural state and your second nature if you just do the work to do that. So how does one go about building resilience into their consultants of business? I think there's many different ways. And so in terms of talking about like your personal resilience, how do you be resilient when you're going on this treacherous journey? There's many ways to do it because a lot of it depends on who you are and where you're at. It's very personal in terms of our own psychology, our own problems, because the kind of thing that might stress me out in my business won't necessarily be the same thing that stresses you out or stresses the next person out. So in that sense, you have to get very self-aware first of all is what are the areas that I'm challenged in? What are the areas that I'm not letting myself fail in or that I'm beating myself up at or I'm struggling to grow and learn because I'm getting too much stress and anxiety or whatever it might be? So the first step actually always in any personal growth is to be self-aware. And that's an ongoing journey. You know, you're learning every day as you grow and change. There's always more to learn about yourself. So take time to reflect first and foremost, what's going on in you? As you go about your daily life and your business, what's going on inside you, your thoughts, your feelings, what behaviors are they driving? What results are they getting? And then from there, the way I work with people is to then say, okay, which areas then are most appropriate for you to work on to build your resilience? Do you need to change your mindset and the way you're looking at things? Do you need to work out or or acknowledge a better way to deal with stressful emotions and learn to regulate yourself so that you're not in a state of chronic stress? Do you need to change your behaviors? So one of my favorite lines is actually a book title, which is feel the fear and do it anyway. Is there something about your body and your physical health? Because that really affects your mental health and resilience. Or is it your environment? Do you need to look at the way you deal with your environment in a different way? Or the last aspect that I teach is looking at your soul and actually connecting to your own gifts, your unique self, who you truly are, what you really want to create, your gifts and talents, which is really where our innate resilience flourishes. So those are the sort of different elements of resilience that I teach. And what any one person needs at any given time depends on who they are. Some people are like, oh, yeah, I really want to look at regulating these emotions because they're really distressing me and stopping me being at my best. Other people might say, do you know what, actually... I know what I need to do to grow, but I'm just too scared to do it. So maybe I just need to look at my behaviors and change the way I'm approaching things physically. So I leave that open to to look at on an individual basis. But one of the things actually that we did at the HRI conference, which was really well received, which I love because it's one of my foundational lessons that I learned from failing in my first business and now doing much better in my second one is actually learning not to take things personally. So this is something that That really resonated with a lot of our people at the conference. You know, when you were going through that, you could almost see the light bulbs pinging. So yeah, I'd love to hear a bit more about that. Yeah, fantastic. It's it's a lesson that I'm continually learning because in every little nook and cranny of my business, I see myself taking things personally. So there's always more in that lesson if you keep looking at it. But yeah, it's essentially that I, my first business, I just got into such a state of resistance and despair and anxiety and failure and not getting the results that I wanted. And so I ended up going back into a corporate job because I'd spent all my savings. I hadn't made any money. You know, every first business owner's worst nightmare, really, because you have the big dream of what you're going to create. And then I just crashed and burned. And so I... I went again to start my business again in 2020 because, you know, in my heart, I have a dream and I know I've got to keep going for it and I want to make it work. So I went for it again, but I was conscious to reflect and say, okay, 
I messed it up last time. Why was that? What happened? What can I do differently? And there were many lessons, but this was one of the key ones that really made me distressed and stopped my ability to learn and grow and expand. And that was that I was taking everything personally. So the lesson that we talked about on the conference was business is structural, not personal. So I'll ask the question actually to the audience here, something for them to ponder. If I say to you, you bake a cake, are you the cake? You're not the cake, right? If you build a house, are you the house? No, you're not the house. So if you build a business, are you the business? No, it is separate from you. But I had become so personally entangled with my business. So I was taking it personally. So when it failed, I was a failure. And that really hurt. That really gets you into a state of low uh, distress, resistance, takes you away from your resilient um, abilities in your mind. Um, if I wasn't making money, there's no value in my business. I'm unworthy. If someone doesn't like my work or they reject a proposal, I am being rejected. So when you make everything personal, so you can look at your own business and go, where am I making it about me? Where do I keep inserting? I? Where am I getting those tense emotions coming up? Because those are signals to show you that you might be seeing this personally rather than structurally and objectively. And so the exercise that we did, which people can do when they listen to this, is to really just imagine your business, you're visualizing it in your own mind, and it's a little bit away from you. Just be conscious of the space between you and the business that you're building, because it's a separate objective entity. And then what I asked people to do on that day was to say, well, look at a dilemma, a problem, a challenge you're having in your business. First of all, how do you see that? when you're taking it personally and making it about you. And that's where you'll get the, oh, I failed, I'm not good enough, I'm not capable, I don't know what I'm doing or whatever else comes up for people. And then that makes them feel sad, unworthy, anxious, and that's a very low state of consciousness. And from there, how are you gonna act? You're probably gonna withdraw, you're gonna run away, you're gonna bury your head in the sand. And what result are you gonna get? you're not going to get anything because you're not actually taking productive action that's fruitful. And so that's what happens when you take things personally. And that's what happened to me. I was so full of my pit of shame and despair that I just wasn't doing anything. I had to just run away in the end. But the other option then is you now look at that dilemma, that challenge in your business, and you separate yourself from it. You see it separate as over there. And you realize it's a whole separate entity that you're building over there, this business like the cake or the house, whatever it is, it's separate, it's away from you. And now see it objectively. And from there, you're going to get much more awareness about the structure of the business. So let's say I'm not making money. Well, okay, the business isn't making money when we see it structurally. And from there, you might see what's obvious. Oh, well, actually, my pipeline's empty. I'm not charging enough. Maybe I'm not going for the right types of clients. I mean, these are all just things I'm making up off the top of my head. So you'd have to do this yourself and explore and see what comes up for you. But when you stop taking things personally and see it structurally, you'll get much more ideas and observation about what's really going on, things you can improve on, things that you can learn, things that will help you to grow and develop. Whereas when you're making it all about you, you can't access that level of thinking because you're just too busy feeling awful. And that's actually a totally separate part of your brain that's operating. And when that part of your brain that's operating that makes you feel awful and so on, it actually stops the advanced part of your brain from functioning, which is the one that you need to be resilient, which is the one that gives you ideas, creativity, imagination, strategic thinking, empathy, rationale, all these wonderful things, which is what you need to grow, develop, learn, adapt, and build the business that you want to build. So yeah, that for me was one of my main lessons. And so I have to reflect on that every day. If I'm in a negotiation with a client, okay, am I making this about me and my personal sense of worth? If they reject me, am I going to make that about me? Because that's not what it's about. It's about the work. It's about value. It's about them. It's about finance. It's about structures. And from there, I can separate myself and just see it much more objectively. And then I'm going to take better actions. I'm going to feel calmer about it. I'm going to learn more. I'm going to move forward rather than getting stuck in the emotions when I'm taking it all personally. 
So that was a bit of a long one, but I hope that explained it with some clarity. It did, yeah. And as I say, I think as I was sitting in the conference watching you speak and sort of watching around the room, it it was like watching, you know, light bulbs go off constantly. Everybody was really engaged with that and was real a lot of people were realizing that resonated with them. And that as a small business owner, I mean, if I think when you sort of say separate yourself from the business in in my own situation, my office is right slap bang in the centre of my house off the front door. So, Mm -hmm. you know, right in the middle of the house, my business and my activities are are front and central in terms of being in the home part of home life. And so it's quite difficult, isn't it, to separate yourself from your business. Yes. And it's easy to get drawn into your business at all sorts of the time, you know, day and night and weekends because You've got to get something done for a client and you don't want to fail, you know, you don't want to uh, or you want to make more money because, you know, you didn't have a very productive week and things like that. So it's quite difficult to separate yourself from your business. But actually, it's so important because I think it makes you have a different perspective about your business. Yes. And a different perspective about yourself, you know, because it's that sense of self where you start to feel low you start to feel so entangled with it all you know and and the other side is true when it's doing well you feel great but then if you play that game then when it's not doing so well you also feel really low so you kind of want to extract yourself from that not to say don't celebrate you know when things are going well you definitely should but yeah it is difficult and I think again it's just like with any skill of developing yourself because I really think developing yourself personally goes hand in hand with developing a business you have to grow at the same time and your business will grow at the same time. I don't think you can do one or the other. So having that bit of time to reflect and do things your way, you know, like you say, I'm sure many people will resonate. Me too, you know, my my office is in my house. This is where I work most of the time. So it can be difficult. So maybe there are some creative ways that people could come up with to really draw a bit of a boundary around their work versus their home I I don't know what those would be but that's the beauty also of resilience resilience is about being creative as well and coming up with ideas and ways to do things differently and try them out be willing to just give it a go and then some of those things will work for you and then you can start to embed those as new ways of being and new habits but it's all just a a game of learning, you know, it's ongoing, you never stop learning, you never stop growing, you never stop to having challenges. And so that that's why, you know, being able to navigate that is so important. Because as we said earlier, it can really floor you, you know, it really can. Yeah, I, I think you just highlighted how difficult it is, even if you become self aware of separating the person from the business, especially if you are the business owner, in that, yes, even though you make a conscious, okay, that's the company there, it does its own thing. I am this person who helps run the company or who owns and run the company, et cetera. But nonetheless, because of your passion, because of your vested interest and everything in it, it does become quite difficult to separate the two. And I totally agree, it's a growth journey to be able to get to the point where, okay, this is the business. Yes, I'm a big part of the business, but I am not the business. There's a distinction between the yes. two. And I think coupled with that is the fact that you can be your own worst critic. Mm. And when you are kind of evaluating or also reviewing someone else, even in the worst scenario, when you've had a worst service ever most people are so kind of kind and yeah. people will go and go well how do you rate this service zero <laughs> someone yeah. like 2.5 3.5 whatever even if they are not very happy with it yeah. whilst if you are reviewing yourself you can be quite harsh and go mm-hmm. oh my goodness that's so terrible that i'll put it at that end of the scale so mm-hmm. yeah yeah Oh, so many things you said there that are really interesting. I think one thing that comes to my mind is, firstly, we don't want to lose the passion. When I say make it structural, not personal, I don't mean don't lose, like lose the passion, lose the emotion. No, like love it, enjoy it and give your heart to it. Definitely don't lose that. But it does tend to be on the flip side, like we say, when things don't go well and we criticize ourselves, that's when it's really helpful to be able to see it objectively and not personally. And the other thing you're saying is, 
you know, something that came to me recently is there's a difference between taking things personally and taking personal responsibility. So yes, you take responsibility for the business because you are running the business, but then don't take things personally. You know, there's that subtle difference, which I think is really important. There's something else you said there at the end, and I'll try and remember what it was, Mary. What were you saying right at the end? Oh, I can't remember it now. Maybe it'll come back to me. <laughs> but, uh... about being your, is it was more about being your worst critic. Yes. Than, yeah. So it is so important. And many of us, me definitely have to learn this. It's so important to be kind to yourself. And I know it's hard. And so I grew up with a lot of criticism. I was criticized for breathing, walking left, right, center, whatever I did, it was never enough. It was always wrong. It was always bad. So that's baked into my psyche. And so that's why I now do that to myself. I will always criticize myself on every little thing, even if I'm succeeding and doing well, I'll, there'll always be a reason for me to say something's not enough or I did something wrong. So I'm having to learn how to not do that to myself. Uh, and that in itself is an ongoing journey. Uh, but part of it is to not take it personally. So, well, it's not about me. It's I'm building a structure out there. What can I learn about that? But yeah, being kind to yourself. I think the other thing that's really helpful with that, and again, some of us, I know me again, do fail to do sometimes. Again, everything I teach is from my own experience, which is why I'm always like, yep, I do this, I do that. <laughs> but it's don't forget to celebrate the wins. There's something I actually, I made a, a booklet for your attendees at the conference and it was Entrepreneur's Resilience Handbook. So I had a number of other lessons in there. And the last one in there is really important. There's a book on it if people are interested and it's called Gap Versus Gain. And so it's about measuring your gains, not your gaps. Because a lot of us will move forward and then look ahead at how far we still have to go to the vision that we've got. And then we feel bad about it because we're not there yet. And the gap is so big. And look at that person next to me. How are they so far ahead? I'm not good enough, blah, 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 whatever. So what they say in this book that I find really helpful is instead of measuring that way, you take your action, have your day, your week, whatever, and then you measure backwards and look at your gains. How far have I come? Did I learn something? Did I get a new client? Did I make a little bit more money? Did I build a new relationship? Did I go out of my comfort zone? Did I finally get my website together? Did I sign up to bid for a particular proposal, you know? All the little gains, think about how you're moving forward, how you're moving forward. So always measure backwards is the essence of that message and celebrate that you are growing and you are moving forward. And again, if you build that into yourself as a habit, it's going to elevate your consciousness, it's going to take you out of those pits of resistance and fear and stress and so on and have you more open to the excitement of I'm growing, I'm learning, I'm expanding, I'm moving forward and to keep the momentum of that going. So I think that's another thing that helps if you're particularly self-critical is consciously sit down on a regular basis and write down your gains and really look at them and, and be grateful for yourself for, for what you are achieving. So that's such an important message. And it's something that I think we don't do enough of, actually. We don't celebrate the wins. And I think what's really interesting is um, something we spoke about right back at the beginning about how, if you look at what people understand, traditionally understand resilience to mean, it's about bouncing back from bad things actually we can learn from the good things and we can bounce back from the good things because if we do something well we can learn what we did on how we did it and we can apply it again so that, that perhaps then we can uh, sort of readjust that you know that roller coaster ride that, that we sometimes have yes so yeah it's really important to celebrate the wins absolutely I highly encourage everybody to do that including myself because <laughs> I do forget uh, but yeah <laughs> and, you know, and it's building momentum and reinforcing, positive reinforcement is really powerful and building momentum. And if you struggle with it, it's okay. It's all baby steps. When it comes to building resilience, building a business, changing yourself in any way, growing in any way, in my experience, it's mostly been baby steps. Yes, I've taken some big leaps here and there, but it's just the little steps every day. They have a massive impact. So you often hear people say this, it's something about, you know, a lot of people say, oh, well, I've got a improve by you know 100% in every single day or in a month or whatever and I've got to take big leaps 
But then people say, no, what if you were just 1% better every day? Than by the or you did one thing every day. Do you know what I mean? It's a lot, basically. <laughs> so you know, it's the little steps. It's the little steps each day, and they do build and they do gain momentum. And you may not see results when you want them, but if you are diligently focused and continually going for it, again, I've studied a lot of successful people over the years. People who are smashing it. I'm talking very, you know, famous, successful business people, sports people, entrepreneurs, artists, all sorts. People who are, you know, big time, and they all say the same thing, which is just keep going. Because where most people will check out because it's too painful or they didn't win yet or they don't want to, you know, go through the pain of doing new things and learning and growing or whatever it is, that's why most people don't get there. Not necessarily because they're not talented or not capable. There's many very talented and capable people out there, but they're not achieving what they want because they gave up too soon. And so many of the successful people say, do you know what? I just never stopped. Now, I will give one little caveat to that. You've got to be going for the right thing. You've got to know what you, is in your heart to do and express, mm. what your business looks like, what your service looks like, what you really want to give and create. So you've got to get that right. But then when you've got that, and it may evolve over time too, but then it's just keep going. And eventually the, the balance has to tip. The energy has to tip. The momentum has to snowball. And it does, but I don't know how long it's going to take. You know, we can't predict that, unfortunately. But if you really want it and it really feels true for you to have this business, to have this lifestyle that you're creating, have those kind of clients, whatever it is, then you've got to just keep going, even though it does get painful and don't give up. Yeah, that's really good advice, I think. And I think it's quite interesting, isn't it? Because I think some of what we've described with people that do potentially give up, it's almost like a, a fight or flight moment, isn't it? It's that sort of fight, flight or freeze. And actually, it's sometimes it's just too hard. Yeah. And, and, that, and that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, and, and it does feel... Know, that's your choice. That's okay. <laughs> well, that's the thing, right? You know, I try not to see things in terms of right or wrong anymore or good or bad or whatever. It is just what it is, you know, and you always have choice, you got a choice to stop. You got a choice to carry on. You got a choice to make take a break and go and earn some money elsewhere, or a choice to carry on a bit later. I don't know. There's always choices, but you know, choices have consequences and outcomes. So you just want to think about that and say, well, what outcome do I actually want? But yeah, there's no denying. I definitely don't want to belittle or play down that fight or flight and freeze. It can get you. It's not easy, you know, so for anyone out there who ever experiences that, I think it's important to understand that it is powerful it and it hurts. But then it's just you have to choose like you can have your downtime, you can have your time to process it and go through it. And then you can decide, do I keep going or, you know, do I not? And again, whatever, like you say, everyone's on their own journey. So I don't make things right or wrong, you know, but but yeah, there is always a choice, but it's not necessarily going to be easy resistance is very real whenever you're creating something new whenever you're growing there's a part of your consciousness that will push against it that is the nature of our minds and so self-mastery is about learning to see that when it comes and then choose to still go forward and that's the ongoing journey that I find everyone I know who's developing businesses and being successful out there they all go through the same thing so we're all in it together as well if that makes anyone feel better we're all going through it so yeah it does definitely I think um you know that one of our one of our mottos for HRI is success together and that's something we really strongly and firmly believe in yeah you absolutely. know that we can learn collaborate and grow together that's a really important key for resilience is relationships when you look at when people go through hard times and challenges, the ones who get through are the ones who have at least even just one person around them really supporting them through it, let alone a group of people. So resilience and relationships go hand in hand. So having that community, having supportive people is so, so impactful and powerful. So that's really good that you have that. And I hope people keep taking advantage of that because it's, it makes a big difference. Great stuff. Did you have any further questions, Mary, for Pinky? 
No, I think it's been a really interesting discussion and one that we can probably go on for a long time. But yeah. I'm sure Charlotte would do it anyway, but it would be good to give your top three or so tips for anyone looking to build resilience into their business from a personal point of view, because I believe it's the angle that we've covered in this discussion. Yeah. Yeah, top three tips. So do you want me to give them? Yes, yeah. please. Yeah. Yes, uh, yeah. If you give us your, your sort of top three tips, that'd be great. My top three tips. Number one is get really clear on what you actually want to build and create and make sure it's coming from your authentic heart and soul. Make sure that vision comes from within you and your imagination and you're aligned with it because that's going to get you off to a good start as soon as you're out the door. Because if you chase other things that other people tell you you should want, what we call extrinsic values and so on, then you're going to be fighting against yourself all the way. So number one is to get really clear on your vision of what you actually want to build in your business, who you want to serve, what your products are and so on, and what what you want to give and create out in the world. Um, Number two is expect and accept resistance. It's going to come. You will have down times. You will have a treacherous journey on occasion, if not often. I don't know. I can't predict when or what, but it will happen. So it's almost like if you can just accept that's part of the ride, rather than expecting it to be all rosy, as we mentioned earlier, I think that can alleviate some of the distress immediately. Third one, I would say, is it's going to be the baby steps again. Remember, resilience is about growth, learning, adaptability, And, you know, the acorn doesn't turn into the oak tree overnight. Tune into your own nature. We grow and evolve bit by bit. So I think allowing yourself to take the baby steps each day, each week and grow each month is really important. Because if you're pushing yourself to try and become an oak tree overnight, again, you're fighting against nature and that's not going to work. So if I had to pick three, that would be it. Get clear in your vision. Expect resistance and don't make it wrong. Just know it's part of the journey and you're not doing anything wrong if you're experiencing pain and fear and all of those things. So it's normal. It's okay. And third is go in baby steps and just keep building. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. Great tips. (laughs) Thank you so much for joining us, Pinky. It's been fascinating. And actually, I would just love to talk to you for so much more. I think there's so much more we could talk about. And it's such a great topic. But thank you for joining us today. And thank you to our listeners for joining us as well. We will obviously be back with another episode in this mini series. And we hope you can join us next time. Thanks very much. Bye bye. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this episode of HR Voices. If you have a topic you'd like us to cover or would like to be a guest, we'd love to hear from you. Connect with us on social media or email us at hrvoices at hrindependence.co.uk. Tune in next time.